Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint a peaceful still life. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can paint with me every week. And then check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. Now let's get started. Today, as always, I am painting on a 12 by 16 inch Frederick's Red Label canvas. This is fresh out of the package. I have not prepared it in any way. And what I want to do first is just create an underpainting of ultramarine blue. You can use any blue that you like. That's just the one that I decided I wanted to use. Because this is my underpainting, I'm not going to see it. I just want to get it on there as quick as possible. So I'm actually going to take a paper towel, dunk it in a little bit of water, wring it out. I don't want it soaked. I just want it damp, kind of like a brush. I think I'm going to take some water and just spray the surface of the canvas. That'll just help the paint spread super easy. And I'm going to squirt some ultramarine onto my paper towel and I'm just going to scrub it on. I'm not worried about it being thick. I'm not worried about it being thin. I'm not worried about it underbinding because I'm going to paint over it. You could certainly use a brush if you like. I know some of you don't like to you know, spread paint with a paper towel. I just want to get it on there as quick as possible. Okay, so that's it. So really we just kind of toned the canvas. Now my whole goal in this painting today is to do it quickly and not just quickly, but to kind of feel the scene and make decisions as they arise. So I'm going to start with my half inch flat brush. I'm going to wet it in my jar and just wipe some off. I really want to use this brush kind of like a pen today. I'm going to do a lot of sketching and scribbling because ultimately all of this will be covered up so I can make decisions, scribble out images, paint over them later. Please don't be afraid to do things like that. I've got some Payne's Gray, more Ultramarine, and some white, and I think I'm just going to kind of start with a mix of Ultramarine and Payne's Gray simply because I don't know exactly what color I want right now. I'm going to hold my brush far back. See that right at the end and I'm holding it loosely. I'm not gripping onto it, just balancing it. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and I'm going to kind of start sketching out right about where I feel like my tabletop is going to be. Maybe let's bring it down a little lower, roughly in there and see my underpainting or my tone is not dry. So I'm lifting it a little bit and that's okay. I'm going to start sketching out where I want my vase to be. I know I want a vase, so I think the bottom of it right about there. The reason I'm doing this quick, guys, is so that I don't spend too much time making decisions. Kind of sketch out where the top of it's going to be. Roughly the sides. It's okay to make this be really loose and ugly. I know that this looks completely ugly at this point. And that is 100% okay. Don't be afraid of the ugly stage. All good paintings have an ugly stage. There, so my vase will be somewhere in all of that chicken scratch. Somewhere in there. Let's start defining that a little bit more, maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, very loose. Decide where you want your light source. Don't let light source, you know, upset you too much or confuse you. Just decide my light is over here and it's shining this way or it's over here and it's shining this way, whatever. Just decide and then stick to that. I'm going to decide that it's light over here shining this way. So my lighter colors are going to be on this side of my vase. But see again, I'm just picking it up laying it down like that. If it's not covering my entire, the entire part of the canvas, that's okay because I toned it, right? So if that ultramarine from the tone is showing through, there's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly why I put it there. We're going to be darker on this side. Maybe I'll grab a little more Payne's gray with my blue over here. It's still very loose. I'm not worried about the edge of 
the vase because I haven't painted the background yet. Just filling it in, roughly keeping my brush strokes in the shape that the vase would flow. So, you know, kind of at an angle there, a little more straight up and down there, because all of that's gonna help say what kind of shape this vase is. Got a little extra water. Don't worry about blending. All we're doing is feeling. We're just feeling where that vase is. Now, I am kind of playing with the color a little bit more, right? I have my light, my mid, and my dark. That's roughly how I want this highlighted. So now, I can start kind of coming in here with my other colors and saying, you know, where those colors exist in the vase. Making sure everything is covered up, making sure that things blend the way I want them to that the colors I want in a certain place are in that certain place. We can scribble a little bit in here even. I kind of like to do that. All right. I think maybe let's let our vase dry. The paint's pretty heavy there. I cleaned off my brush and I'm gonna get some Payne's Gray. You could use Mars Black if you like. I would just really love the soft color of the Payne's Gray. I picked up just a little corner of white and I'm just gonna choose somewhere, it doesn't matter on this background, and start kind of scrubbing that color in. The reason I'm scrubbing, instead of you know trying to do things nice and tidy, is it helps me not micromanage. If you are a micromanager, you know, when you paint, if you tend to get in here and make sure that every little speck of that canvas is covered up, then I, I seriously challenge you, hold that brush far back and just kind of scrub. See what happens. If anything, it will just be, you know, a change from what you're used to and it might feel liberating. I think it feels super liberating to just get in here and scrub. Don't worry about where that tabletop is. We'll take care of that in a minute. And see, sometimes I'm up on the tip of my brush, kind of back and forth like that. That kind of helps shove the paint down into the texture. I'm not worried about brush stroke marks. Ultimately, if some of that ultramarine on the underpainting still shows through, that's okay too. That's why I chose it. You choose your underpainting color based on what you would be okay seeing if it showed. If you think it would look really cool, if you had like some little bright orange pops poking out through instead of the blue, then you can paint bright orange underneath here. That would be okay. See how much of that underpainting is showing here, how much of that little bit of blue. And I feel like that kind of helps bring a bit of cohesion to the painting, right? The vase is blue. We've got these little bits of blue showing. So it kind of brings a bit of harmony to all of the colors, but also I can go ahead and scrub and not worry about, you know, getting down into all of the texture and know that it's still going to look okay. Whereas if I left the canvas white and those showed, they might, you know, draw your attention a little bit more. As I start moving toward the vase, I'm going to make my paint a little darker. A little extra water. I'm only picking up the Payne's gray, but I still have some of the, the gray on my brush. Now I know some people don't <laughs> like to scrub like this because they feel like, you know, they're gonna damage their brush. And certainly, 
it it can damage a brush. So if it's a brand new brush and you know maybe you paid a lot of money for it, you probably want to use a different brush. But me, I'm not worried about it. Brushes are replaceable, but what's not replaceable is experience and you know learning something new. And you know if I if I don't use a brush the way that I feel like I need to to do something in particular, you know, the experience that I didn't gain is more valuable than a brush that I can easily replace. Now I'm getting close to my vase. So I am gonna spend just a little bit more attention and really clean up the edge. Now any bits of the vase that got away from me, I can reshape, I can paint over them anything I need to completely reshape this vase. And since I'm not done with my vase yet, anything that I do here that maybe overlaps my vase too much, cuts out part of it, changes the shape, whatever, I can fix that. I can bring it back as I finish up my vase. I'm just using the edge of my brush, tidying up that shape, and then scrubbing out that line. I don't want to, you know, like a weird halo line around the edge of my vase. Same thing over here. I love to paint still life. You know, especially from your head. I feel like sometimes when, when you paint still life from something actually in front of you, sometimes there's pressure to, you know, render the light or the colors or the shape exactly the way you see it. But you know, when you paint it just out of your head, then it can be whatever you want it to be, whatever you need it to be. Back here, around this side, because this is the dark side of my vase, I am not taking quite as much care to get a tight, crisp line. In fact, if you notice, I am kind of overlapping my vase a little. It's okay, in fact, it's preferred if back here you can't really tell where the vase ends and the background begins because they would be roughly the same value. If it's very dark back here, the vase is probably gonna be very dark. So go ahead and let them blend in. It's gonna seem much more in the scene if you lose the edge of this vase. Zoom you out there a little bit while I finish this part up. See, overlap that edge. Just lose the edge of that vase. I know that, you know, your analytical brain wants to say, don't lose the edge of that vase. It's not gonna look, it's not gonna look three-dimensional, but I promise it will. Especially if we don't lose it in all areas. You know, if we have like one little area that's just slightly lighter, that reminds you that that edge is still there. I'm just gonna break up some areas where I feel like I've got lines that I don't want in my background. Since I painted this really quick with a wet brush and lots of paint, it's still pretty damp. But if not, then you can just grab some more paint and just do it again. You can layer it as much as you want. Let's work on our tabletop a little bit. So just to keep some interest, I think I'm gonna change the highlight and shadow on my tabletop just a bit. I'm going to make a decision that my light is coming from up here. It's shining this way. And so I've decided that I think it's going to be a little darker here. It's going to fade to lighter here. It'll be dark again back here. And that'll kind of give me that spotlight type look. But that's just what I've decided now. I may decide, no, I don't like that. So I'm starting with that darker color. I am scribbling it again, but ultimately I'm keeping things mostly horizontal. 
little extra water. I've got my paints gray right here where the tabletop meets the background. I'm just gonna let it meet loosely. A little extra white. Soft pressure there. I don't need a hard line where those two meet. It's not necessary. The change in the color, the change in the value, the change in the direction of my brush stroke, all of those are gonna help say, this is now a flat tabletop. This is an upright wall. Okay, now same here. I'm gonna cut around the edge of my vase and I can, you know, define the shape of the base of it. Cause I didn't put a lot of attention into that. I just basically said, here's where the base sits and here's roughly the size and shape. Again, kind of blurring out that shape back here. Dark color for under the vase. I think I am going to bring this highlight out just a little farther here. Just making little adjustments to make sure that I like the way this looks. Now I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes mostly so that I can get away from it. Sometimes if I stand in front of a painting for too long, especially if I'm just kind of feeling where the image is like right now, I feel like if I stand in front of it for too long, I start to judge it too much. So I'm gonna completely get away from it and then come back and continue in the same fashion. Okay, so I've had some time away from this and it's had a little time to dry. Some of it is still a little wet, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start working on this vase again. I'm gonna stick with my half inch flat and just kind of build those shadows and highlights. A little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Ultramarine. And I'm gonna start back here. I kind of lost my edge there. And I mean, I know I said that it was okay to lose the edges, but I kind of lost the color. And I felt like there was no definition there between the background and the edge of the vase. So I just added that blue back in. So the color is there, but the value is still quite dark. And remember, the value refers to how light or dark something is. So the, the blue being there helps say this is still the vase, but the dark value is what blends in with the background. Let's go a little more on the blue side up here. I like how it's nice and bright up here because I feel like if the light were coming from over here, this edge on the inside might catch a hint more of the light than you know down here where it's kind of facing downward, it's deeper in the vase, it might not be catching much if any light, but up here I feel like it might. So I'm actually gonna roll that off, get rid of some of that Payne's Gray, a little more of the blue. Just deepen up that color. There we go. And I'm gonna scribble that in again. Keep that edge tidy and scribble in the rest of it. A little bit of white, scribble it in down this edge. Still keeping a little extra water on my brush. Just lay that white down, I'm not worried about what it looks like. Just pop a bit of highlight there. Kind of blends with that section. Tiny hint of blue, 
and scribble out those hard lines. Remember your vase might have some areas on it where it's got some brighter spots, whether it's, you know, light reflecting on it or, you know, it could be like that um, marbled glass. Have you seen that where it's like blue and white glass that's kind of swirled together? And don't, just don't worry too much about it seeming like something specific. Just let it be a painting that you're proud of and that's all that matters. Just think about each brush stroke. You know, what is each brush stroke doing to the overall image? See, I'm just kind of taking the tip of my brush and working it down like this. Now, the one thing you want to kind of be careful with is you want to pay attention to the shape of your vase and the way the light would curve, okay? So roughly, let's talk about the shape of the vase. So if we have a circle, let's say that that's the, the body of our vase. It's this area here, okay? When you're adding highlights, you don't want to go straight up and down. That's going to make it flat. Another thing you don't want to do is just follow this edge all the way around, you know, like this. And then you get to the middle and you're like, I don't know which direction to go. This direction goes this way because that's also going to make it seem flat. So instead you kind of picture it coming toward you. So, you know, a highlight right here, it might kind of follow the shape of the vase. And as it comes around, it's going to start to straighten out a little bit until right here in front of you, it's pretty much going to be up and down. And then it kind of starts moving the other way again. So it's the same thing with the neck of the vase, how, let's see, we'll do it smaller right here. If I've got the neck of the vase that is shaped like that, the highlights there, they'll kind of follow it there and a little less and a little less until it's about up and down and then it starts curving the other way. So just be aware of that. Don't make this perfectly match the edge and don't make it all just straight up and down or side to side. It slowly gets straighter as it gets to the middle, no matter which direction it's curving. So let's continue this with some white. Also, your highlights don't necessarily just follow the outer edge of your shape. You know, I could have my brightest highlight be right about here. See how that is ever so slightly curved forward ever so slightly, but it's mostly right up and down because it's pretty close to the center of my vase shape. Let's pull just a little bit more in there. See that's mostly right up and down, straight up and down there. See a little bit of a curve there. A little bit of blue, just kind of feeling where I want each color. And if I put a color somewhere and I'm like, nope, that's not the color I wanted there, it's okay. I don't worry about it because I can change it later. I can add another color over top of it, whatever I want. 
Now, if you want to make your vase seem a little bit more transparent, we can do that quite simply. And I will show you. I kind of like the idea that my vase is made up of transparent and opaque glass. I'm trying to think, there's gotta be a specific name for it. You know, glass that is made of transparent blue with like the, the ribbons of the opaque white through it. That's kind of what I'm picturing here. So I'm gonna take just a little hint of white, just a tiny bit, and you can skip this if you like. Down here at the bottom, just slightly up from the bottom edge of my vase. I'm gonna come in here and just kind of see it a slight curve. So that almost looks like the interior of the vase is taking a little bit of light. I can even put a little bit of a highlight right in there, following up the edge. Maybe there's a little bit of light reflecting on the inside of the vase there. And if I decide, no, that doesn't actually look good, then I can just come back and, you know, take it out with some dark paint later. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a highlight in there on the bottom of the vase. I've got a little bit of a highlight inside kind of going up. We'll see how that goes. Let's get a little bit up here on this top edge on the lip nice bright white get as bright and as solid of a white as you can just kind of touch it let it be let it be nice and thick it's okay if your brightest highlight has a little bit of texture to it Nice, bright, 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 bright. Down here, just because there's nothing overlapping it, so it doesn't necessarily seem inside, I'm gonna take some of this light blue and add my highlight that kinda, kinda comes up over it See, so that looks like this color I'm putting on now is on the outside of the vase. Oops, that was way too bright. I don't want it that white. And since it overlaps that a little, it kind of pushes it deeper into the vase. And that's what I like. I feel like this back edge is just a little out of shape on my vase. So I'm gonna get a bit more of my Payne's Gray. Again, making sure that my values just blend in. I'm just taking away some of the blue and that paint is still wet, so it's kind of lifting. I can make any of those touch-ups where that white is showing later. I'm not worried about that right now. When you see things like that, I know our first instinct is to go, oh, I have to correct that and put more paint on it. You're not going to, you're just gonna lift more. Just leave it alone for now. I am gonna darken the bottom edge. And I feel like I'm pretty much done with my vase except for the little touch-ups I'm gonna to put on it once I add the orange. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding our orange. And the reason I chose an orange specifically was because that's a nice contrast in colors between the orange and the blue, since they're complementary colors. But you could do any type of fruit or vegetable or any other object that you like here. I'm gonna use cadmium orange, and this is the heavy body orange. The basics orange is not as opaque, 
and the color is different. So if I were to use the basics, I would have a little bit of a harder time getting coverage. Now the first thing I want to do is lay in the base color for my orange and I'm going to have it be pretty close to my shadow color of the orange. So I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine and mix it with my orange. Just get this nice dark color. Now when placing an orange, an object here, if it's going to overlap the vase, you need to be careful about where you place the bottom of it. Now if I place the bottom of my orange right here, that's going to say it's behind the vase. So if it's behind the vase but also overlapping it, that's going to be strange. To make it look like it's in line with the vase or slightly in front of it, we need to bring the bottom of the orange down lower than the bottom of the vase. And I feel like now I probably put the bottom of my vase down a little too low, but I can bring it up with my, you know, just by painting the background color over it again. So I'm not going to worry about that. But that starts my orange lower than the vase, which is good. And I'm just going to kind of sketch out loosely. You can sketch it out a little smaller than you think you want it because you can always make it bigger. Okay, there's the shape of our orange. Roughly, we'll probably change. Let's fill it in with that same blue-orange mixture. Again, just with those kind of flat, loose brush strokes. Just lay a color down. Don't worry about, you know, going back and forth like that. Don't worry about that. I'm not even particularly worried about getting an even mixture of my color. Okay, now we can really start playing with the shadows and highlights on it. So I'm going to get a color that's quite dark. See how much darker that is? That's going to be my color for the back here. And actually, because my orange is still wet, that didn't do a whole lot, did it? Let's get some Payne's Gray instead. We'll add that in there. So we want it nice and dark on the bottom here. So lay that down and then just kind of dash it very lightly. See that? Very lightly dash a blend. It doesn't even have to be a smooth blend. little paints gray I'm going to go straight into my orange and do the same thing up here just like on the vase, all I'm really doing now is reminding myself it's going to be the brightest right here, it's going to be the darkest right here. Let's fix up the base of the table right at the bottom of the, of the vase. So I've got some Payne's Gray and just a tiny bit of white. And I'm going to come in here and just bring the table up just a tiny bit, only like an eighth of an inch. That's really all it's going to take. feel like that tiny little bit that I brought the base of the vase up is going to be plenty. Let's take that shadow color right under the orange as well. That shadow starts in the front 
blends and goes all the way to the back right here between them too. And that's going to be a dark area so I'm going to let the bottom of the vase kind of blend in with the tabletop. Throw a little extra dark color into the vase here because the orange is blocking the light. You can take this as an opportunity to reshape your orange if you need to also. Okay. I think that is good for now. Don't worry if your orange isn't perfectly round. Oranges aren't perfectly round. Sometimes they're kind of weird shaped. Gives them personality. So let your orange be a little weird shaped if that's what it wants to do. Okay, let's keep adding our shadows to our orange. I'm going to stick with the Payne's Gray. I feel like I like the way that it darkens the orange more than the ultramarine. So I have quite a dark color there because the back of my orange is going to be quite dark. Quite, quite dark. I have kind of a strange shape on my orange there. No, I just told you don't worry about it, but that was a little bit more than more than I liked. That orange looked like he had fallen fallen off the tree and taken a hard hit on one side. Nice and dark down here. Dark, dark, dark. Remember, you want your values to pretty much match. And right now, my values do not match. But this is quite wet and thick, so I may just have to, you know, work on that a little at a time as it dries. And that's okay. It's going to be dark down here. In fact, maybe I will just let this dry for a few minutes so I can get those values good and move on because we shouldn't see that much difference between the orange and the vase and the orange and the table. Okay, that is much drier now, so let's continue. More Payne's Gray, a very dark color here. There's just a little orange in that. Lay it down and break it up. Up the edge back here too a bit. For sure along the bottom. And let's grab a little more orange. Lay that down and break it up. Do not aim for a perfectly smooth blend here. Oranges have texture to their skin. So if it's perfectly smooth, it's gonna look more like a ball than an orange. But if it's got a bit of texture, that's going to be a good way to kind of indicate that there's some texture there without actually putting in all kinds of effort to make, you know, a real specific orange skin. And I still haven't cleaned off my brush, so I still see I still have some of that Payne's Gray in there, and that's okay. Light, light pressure. Remember, it's just the tip of the brush. It is not bending. 
except when I want to lay paint down. So I lay it down and then up on the tippy toe, no bending of my brush, no pressure. Very small movements to just break it up. And it doesn't matter if this takes you several layers to do. I mean, just for the sake of time, I hope to not spend, you know, too terribly long working on layers, but ultimately it doesn't matter to me how many layers it takes me to get it right. Now let's do the top of the orange before we get too far into that. So I'm gonna go back to that dark color just right here kind of a just a little swoop break up one of the edges probably this far back edge and that's it take some of our bright orange put the bright orange there and right here I just wiped my brush off to get rid of some of that Payne's Gray. I didn't clean it. Just laying down more of that orange. Let the texture of your canvas show if it wants to. That's just gonna help you get that, you know, orange peel texture. We do have one more color we're gonna add to the orange. So don't feel like, you know, that this orange has to be super bright to be convincing. Let's take a hint of that color actually and just kind of sketch it onto our vase a little scribble it on just like we did before remembering the curve of our vase a little darker back here and we can go a little bit brighter up here all right I feel like I'm almost done I have a little cadmium yellow medium and I will be using that in a second I'm just gonna make sure that I've got the bright orange where I want it And I may kick back a little of these shadows just a bit. Just pull some of this bright orange down just a little, very thinly. There we go. Just changing the shape, the top of the orange here, just a bit. You can move down to a, a different brush, a smaller brush if you like. Sometimes I like to challenge myself to, you know, use the same brush for the whole painting. Now the yellow, I'm gonna apply a little thicker, see how I kind of picked up a blob of it. I'm really just gonna kind of set it down where I feel like the brightest part of my orange is. Pretty bright here up on the top edge. Set it down, break up any lines that I don't want in there. Again, remember that the brightest highlight part may not be on your edge. So we don't need to take this bright yellow down the edge like that. That might not be the brightest area. 
the brightest area might be right there on this face that's kind of pointing at us. We can pick up a little more orange if we want and kick back anything. A little more yellow, I think, right here next to that darker area on the top of the orange as well as the darker area in the background. That's going to help create a nice, interesting area of contrast to look at. And maybe we'll grab a little poke of white, lay it down there, a little poke of yellow, put it in there, kind of pick them up together so they're a little marbled. Right where it's really going to be bright, we'll just lay that down. See that? Just one little swipe, done. And maybe one more little swipe of it right there. feel like we are pretty close, just a little bit more yellow right there. Stand back, I am standing at an arm's length back. So see how I'm holding my brush? My arm is fully extended. That way I can see how this all works together. And if it's too much, that was way too much yellow. I'm gonna wipe it off, a little bit of orange. And because I'm standing so far back, I can take in the whole orange at once. I can see exactly what it looks like, how that one highlight affected the entire image. I feel like I might be done. All I'm gonna do now is just kind of go through and touch up some of these areas like where my paint lifted. Get rid of some of those. Make any last adjustments to any bits that I feel like were the wrong color, the wrong value, you know, whatever. Just gonna make tiny little adjustments. Just very small adjustments. I don't feel like it would be quite that dark right there behind the orange. Because we might have some light reflecting off of the vase down onto the table there. So I just lightened that ever so slightly. Darken this just a hint right here, right under the orange. Since remember I said that my light source, I felt like it was coming from the top, pointing down. That's getting there. So I might have a little bit more of a shadow right here in the front. I would really only not have a shadow there if my light were coming from over here directly that way, but I feel like it's kind of coming that way. And I think I want to brighten up the table just a little bit in here. So even though that's dry, I'm just going to scribble some of this Payne's gray white mixture there. Just to pop it a little bit. I think I want to punch the highlight back in here just a little bit. Remind myself that I think that this is a clear vase. Just overlap it with that blue again because that helps push it inside of the vase. I 
one last little thing and then I'm done. I cleaned off my brush. I just picked up a little poke of Payne's Gray on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna come in here and just kind of, that's my little, the little stem bit of the orange. Just a little hint that it's there. And then I'm gonna sign up. And there's your still life. Now, sometimes when I'm painting for you guys, I kind of get into a mode where I'm thinking about so many things that occasionally I will let things slide in my painting that later I look at and I think, oh, I should have you know, done this or that. So today I wanted to point some of those out to you to show you that it's okay to you know, see things that you don't particularly like and then come back at a later time and try and find a way to correct them. So in this painting, for example, I told you that I wanted my light source to seem like it was coming from up and pointing down. So I feel like my light on my vase got a little bit weird with that. If I were coming back in to make some corrections, what I would do is probably darken right here, just a little bit, not too dark, maybe about like the color I've got going on right here. And then I would take this brighter white right about in here not up against the edge back here because I feel like that's gonna push this flatter and I think it already looks a little flat. So I would take a bit of that white right along here to kinda pump up the highlight there to show that our light source is hitting it and that that part is rounded and kinda poking forward a little bit more. So I tell you all that so that you know that it's perfectly okay. Give your painting a few days rest if you feel like maybe there's something about it that you just don't like. Don't look at it for a few days and then come back, look at it, and I think you'll be able to see it with a little bit of a fresher viewpoint and you'll be able to see areas that you think you should change. I think that sometimes while we're in the middle of painting, we notice that there's something we don't like, but we're not quite sure what it is. So we keep messing with it and then a lot of times we feel like we end up ruining our painting. So that's why I tell you it's really important to step away from it for a couple of days before you make decisions like that. So I think I may mess with those colors, the shadows and highlights on that vase just a little bit more. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. Just search for Painting with Jane and you will find me. And I will post a finished photo of this with those little corrections that I pointed out to you. A big thank you to my sponsor Fredericks who provided the awesome canvas that I used in today's video. And thank you as always for painting with me everyone. I'll see you next time.